It's been said that there are hundreds of documented pasta shapes known to the world. But there are hundreds more that the world doesn't know. Brilliant shapes and traditions that are hidden in forgotten towns and practiced by generations of forgotten people. Learning about these rare shapes, traditions, and histories isn't just a job to me. It's a calling. Are the pieces always this size, or are they change? Basically, it reads way better on the plate like this. I built this restaurant as a way to pass my knowledge on to my team, my guests, and hopefully the world. We got wild. Each and every dish that comes out of this kitchen was born in Italy. Just so everybody knows, I'm about to leave for Italy. I'll be gone for a month. There is a lot of anxiety wrapped up in me leaving this restaurant. We're going to try and cover about seven shapes, all women pasta makers from the south to the north. This is very much a teaching restaurant. Those guys need to grow while I'm gone, and they'll grow again when I come back with this new information. Please make me proud while I'm gone, OK? Thank you very much. Order in a written and rare. OK, guys. Even though it pains me to leave Felix, it's time to return to the source and keep these shapes alive. One of the rarest pastas on Earth, a shape that only a few hundred people even know exists, comes from a tiny mountain town in the south of Italy called Teana. The shape and the town are near extinction, so I'm here hoping to find a master who can teach me how to make. Rashkatieli. You can see it's a small town. We are on a mountain. We are just 600 people. Only 600. This pasta, how do you say it in the dialect? Rashkatieli uh, Mishkid. Okay, yes. <laughs> slow the shit down. Rashkatieli. Rashkatieli. Perfect. E. Mishkij. Mishkij. Yeah. OK, wow. It means scratch. Scratching. Yeah, you scratch the pasta. The shape is so distinct, so regional to this town. You know, somebody an hour from here who lives mm -hmm. here never heard of yeah. it. Never heard of it. We are not a lot of young people. We are becoming always fewer. We are trying to preserve the shape. It's our identity and our history. Because there's so many older people here, what happens if the young people don't continue don't the traditions? Yeah. If we don't succeed, uh, of course, it will die. That's why I'm here. I'm just trying to learn about what you do here so that I can take it to the US and continue the conversation. This is still a land of shepherds, still a land of farmers. You said that you have a pasta maker. Teresa. Can we go see Teresa? Yeah. OK, Can let's go. go. The young people are leaving. The culture is dying. And I can't even say the name of this pasta. Nothing is easy on the top of this mountain. Teresa, che è mia cugina. Teresa was born and raised in this farming community. As a steward of this land, she and her family produce everything they need. Shh. She's also one of the last remaining custodians of the shape. She's the reason I've come all this way. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. Come stai? Tutto bene, tutto bene. Ciao, signore. Allora, siamo qui per imparare a fare la pasta. Facciamo sì. Dimmi. Allora, tell me how long you've been making this shape. Io ho 50 anni. Io ho 56. So six years old, she's been making this shape. It's amazing. No scale. Questa è semola. Questa invece è farina di fave. Ma miscelata due parti e una parte. 
Quindi dalla necessità, miscelando queste due farine, si riusciva a portare a tavola un piatto bello sostanzioso okay. e abbondante. Just by seeing the ruggedness of this landscape, I can see how hard growing wheat would be in these mountains. And fava beans would do very, very well here. There's a lot of struggle. For this shape, the pasta is the source of the nutrition to fill one's belly so you can go back to work. These hands, this flower, this land, these people, this history, that's what it's all about. Wow. Come on. Fantastic. Oh my god. Proviamo. Ok. <laughs> Quanti di? Sei, sei. Le mie sei. No, I'm thinking about it too much. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Meno forte o più forte? No, più le dita un po' più dritte e strascinarli un po' più Wow. A lungo. Okay, so she's saying she's using six, but she's actually using eight. And her pinkies are just on the outside, holding in these edges here so that it makes an oval mm. shape. Vai ancora, per favore. Oh my God. I love that, watching that. I watch that all day. It's genius natural engineering. It really is. Un po' di pratica in più, yeah, yeah, non yeah. guasta. I, I don't want to embarrass myself anymore. I'm going to save my practice for my little glass box in Los Angeles. Vogliamo fare un condimento? Sì. Oh. Buono. I need a moment to myself with this pepper. It was like a potato chip that tastes like a pepperoni pizza. We dressed the rascatelli in a tomato-based sauce and a sauce made from the dried zafferani pepper, olive oil, and garlic. I cannot wait to try and replicate this in the U.S. because there's nothing like this. I've never smelled anything like this. I don't even want to talk anymore. We have to eat it. <laughs> I've never had the complex textures and flavors of this shape. It would be the most unfortunate thing for me to see this shape go into extinction. I absolutely will make sure that the story is told in the correct way. The flavors and the textures and the complexity are all born from a very, very simple place, a place of necessity, a place of love and nurturing. It's beautiful. The privilege of learning such a rare shape has changed my perspective as a chef and a pasta maker. So, as I leave this secluded village for Rodino, a town 683 miles north, I'm headed back into my past to a shape that started my love affair with pasta making more than a decade ago. She's so fast. And I know I still have so much to learn. Agnolotti.